So the first step in doing this is to take off all the part. Hello and welcome to BusyBTV, I'm your host Lucas Weekly and this week we're continuing with the Tricopter version 2.5 build with part 2. Now if you haven't seen part 1, click over here. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay, in this episode we'll be going over printing and assembling the frame, setting up our ESCs, configuring our KK board, checking gyro directions, balancing the motors and props, and setting up our radio. So let's get started. So now the assembly is done and it went together really easily. All I had to do is clean off the 3D printed parts and drill some extra holes for some bolts and then screw in all the bolts. Now, if you're not comfortable with drilling holes and screwing in bolts, you probably shouldn't even be building a tricopter in the first place. Okay, so next step is to program our ESCs. Now this is really important so that you don't crash when your battery becomes low on power. So the first step to do this is to take off all the propellers so you don't accidentally get cut. And then you need to go get your uh, ESE programmer. Now I have a full um, parts list in the description uh, with this included in it. So if you want to build this tricopter, go see that in the description and you can get all the parts for this tricopter. Now the first thing to do with the programmer is to plug in the servo lead coming off of the ESC into the programmer like it shows you. And now you plug in the battery. And if you plugged it in right, all the lights should light up. Now let's take a closer look at all the settings that you need to set. The brake should be off, the battery type should be set at NICAD, the cutoff type should be soft cutoff, cutoff voltage should be at low, start mode should be at normal, timing mode should be at middle, music I don't have that set, and governor's mode should be off. Once you have all these settings, push the OK button and it will save it to the ESC. So once you've programmed all the ESCs, we're going to move on to plugging in all the wires to the KK board. But first, we have to flash it. Let's go. The KK board from Hobby King comes with a quadcopter program pre-installed. Now we need to reflash it for a tricopter. There's a link in the description for an article on how to do this. And this is where the signal, voltage, and ground wires go. To connect the board to the receiver, you need to make four melt mill extenders. These are really easy to make if you have servo extenders. Then you use the wiring diagram I just showed you and plug in all the wires. As for the ESC wires, the left motor goes into port 1, the right motor goes into port 2, the back motor goes into port 3, the servo goes into port 4, and if the servo is not moving in the correct direction, you put it in port 5. Now that we've reflashed the KK board and plugged in all the wires, we need to make sure that the motors are moving in the correct direction and if the gyros are compensating in the correct direction. Now the first step in doing this is to make sure that you've taken off all the propellers. The motors will be spinning now and you do not want to get your hand caught in one of these. Okay, so the first thing is to turn on your transmitter. Make sure that it's bound with the receiver on the tricopter. Now we're going to plug in the battery to the tricopter. You should hear the motors chime a couple of times. And now what we need to do is we need to arm the tricopter. And the way that we do this is we take the rudder throttle stick and we move it to the bottom right corner. And you should see the red light come on the KK board and the motors chime for a final time. Now to check if all the motors are moving in the correct direction, you just simply idle up the throttle just a little bit and you just should see all the motors turning on and moving in the same direction. Now when it's idled, to check the gyro direction, you need to pick it up 
And if you dip one of the sides, that motor should speed up. So if I dip this side, you can see that one sped up to the same for all of the other sides. Now to check the yaw axis, if you spin it, the motor in the back should turn opposite of where you're spinning it so as to compensate for that movement. If your gyros are not moving in the correct direction, there's a link in the description to give you more information about how to change the settings on the KK board. Okay, now let's move on to balancing the motors and the propellers. Brushless motors without their props on should not create that many vibrations. So, the way you check for vibrations is you unplug two of the three motors and you're going to turn on the tricopter like I showed you before. You're going to slowly idle up that one motor and hold onto the arm and feel for vibrations. If there's a significant amount of vibrations, you're going to take a zip tie and you're going to wrap it around the motor, pull it tight and cut off the excess. Now you're going to idle it up again and feel for vibrations. If there's still vibrations, you're going to give it a quarter turn. Once you give it a quarter turn, idle it up again and feel for vibrations. Keep on doing this until the vibrations become minimal. Then you're going to unplug that motor and do the same for all the other motors. Once you've balanced all the motors, you should feel a significant difference in the vibration throughout the entire tricopter. Now we're going to move on to balancing the propeller. Okay, to balance your propellers, you're going to want to go out and buy this prop balancer. This one I got at my local hobby shop and it folds to look like this. Now this holds the prop inside here. Let me put it in really fast. And so it holds the prop in kind of like a frictionless place so that the heaviest part of the prop will go to the bottom. The instructions inside this are pretty good and it'll explain how to balance props. You can also go on YouTube to go for a more detailed description, but this is really important if you don't want to have vibrations in your video. Now let's move on to programming our radio. For my dual rates and expos, I prefer on my aileron and elevator channels, I have 75% dual rates and expo, and my rudder, I have 100% dual rates and 50% expo. For the KK board to properly recognize your controls, you need to reverse the aileron, elevator, and rudder channels. Okay, so I finished programming my radio and I finished tightening down all the props to my tricopter, so let's go out and fly. Oh, wait. I ran out of time. <laughs> well, next week I'll show you how to fly and give you some helpful tips so you don't crash. If you don't want to miss next week's episode, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. As I said before, be sure to check out the description for a full parts list, all my designs, and helpful links for completing this project. <laughs> I missed